IPv6 going over IPv4. So this all seems very complicated. But from the end user perspective, this all just happens under the covers and it's automatic. Mm -hmm. From the application perspective, the application just needs to know it wants to talk with IPv6. And as far as the application is concerned, is all it is doing is talking to IPv6. It doesn't realize there is any um, tunnels being made. It doesn't realize that the Trado was sending keep alive packets to some central server. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know any of that. Um, so uh, this is this is a very seamless model for applications to take advantage of NAT traversal because without with so without Trado, if an application wants to do NAT traversal like. Uh, Microsoft Messenger, uh, Live Messenger, they need to build their own NAT traversal technology. They need to go build their own central um, uh, servers to, to be ha doing handling the rendezvous. Mm -hmm. They need to build all that infrastructure. Well, now, any developer that wants to can easily do NAT traversal with IPv4 okay. so turn that light off. Thank you. With, um, by just making sure their application supports IPv6. Cool. Um, so it really simplifies the model. Now, as IPv6 is more widely deployed, and we get ISPs actually deploying IPv6 and provision, so your router in the future, your router will actually get an IPv6 address from the ISP. In which case, then Trado won't be used. It, the stack will automatically trans uh, do the communication in native IPv6. Mm. So, so in Vista today. IPv6 applications can get an immediate benefit, IPv6 capable applications get an immediate benefit of having improved connectivity on IPv4 internets and networks. Hmm. It, do a, it, it sounds a little counterintuitive, but IPv6 applications in Vista can have better connectivity on the IPv4 internet than an IPv4 application. Wow. Um, and uh, going further on that, from a software development perspective, you don't have to do much to make your application IPv6 compatible. Mm -hmm. Is all you have to do is make sure that you do not use old APIs that are IPv4 only. So as long as you're using just the newest Winsock APIs, for example, if you're using Winsock, um, and you're not hard coding in any address dependencies, then your application should be able to work fine with either IPv4 or IPv6. Um, some things you need to avoid are, for instance, building a user interface that asks for an address but has it formatted with the dots. So mm -hmm. that then now you've hard coded in a dependency for IPv4 so that somebody can't even put in an IPv6 address if they want to. Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid doing that kind of a thing. Um, to give some examples of, of some of the benefits of this um, in of Teredo, in Windows XP, there is a service uh, called Remote Assistance that allows somebody to remotely access your computer. They can see your screen, move the mouse, and, and help you uh, troubleshoot or find out what, uh, what's going wrong with your computer. Mm -hmm. The Remote Assistance software team at Microsoft has found that in Windows XP, um, far less than 50% of the atten uh, connection attempts succeed. They have a, actually a very um, small um, uh, success rate on hmm. Windows XP. And when they analyze that information, it turns out that the majority of the failures happen because one or more parties was behind a NAT. And NATs break peer-to-peer -peer communication, unless you have a whole infrastructure that you've built to handle NAT traversal. And remote assistants didn't build that kind of an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Well, in Vista, remote assistance now can take full advantage of IPv6. Uh, it's IPv6 compatible. It's not an IPv6 only application. It's just compatible with IPv6. Mm -hmm. And now they're finding, in looking at the data from the Vista beta program, that they are getting very high connection success rates. And, and when they analyze that data, they're seeing the majority of the connections are going over Teredo. Um, so that wasn't the... The remote in this example, the remote assistance team is seeing much greater, much greater improved connectivity for their peer-to-peer -peer application, and they didn't have to do anything special. They just made sure they supported IPv6. Mm. So cool. that's an example of how you can get uh, or of some of the benefits of supporting this. And it isn't really all that hard to build an application that can work with IPv6. It's just using your you don't use old APIs. 
you don't build, you don't hard code in address dependencies, mm -hmm. um, and and there is some developer guidance that we have published that can that can walk through some of some of these things as well. Okay. An another thing that I'll mention about Teredo in Vista is that we have added in a security feature for Teredo, or a couple security features. Good. One security feature is that Teredo will not come up. It, Teredo will not start sending people lives and bubbles and so on unless there is a host firewall present on the system. So you have to have a host firewall that supports IPv6 running on your PC. So if you turn off the Windows firewall and you have no other host firewall running on your on your Vista PC, you Teredo will not work. Uh, um, this is by design. Because when Teredo is functioning, it basically does open up your PC to the internet. And so we it, we felt it was important to make sure there was a host firewall that was that was only allowing traffic in for the services that you wanted to have, allow traffic in for. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a security precaution we've taken in Vista. Uh, another uh, another extension of that feature is that that only applications or services that have Windows Fire that have a, an edge traversal option set in the Windows Firewall UI are allowed to receive traffic over Teredo. Mm -hmm. So there's an option, an, an, an advanced option in the Windows Firewall now in Vista for edge traversal. And you have to have set that edge traversal option for the application to be able to use um, Teredo. Um, and, and this ensures that some application, um, that, that, it, that you don't accidentally open up a service to the internet that you didn't want to. Maybe you wanted to do file sharing locally, just on your local network, but you didn't want your file share to be accessible directly over the internet. Well, then you can you can rest assured that that traf your file share will not be open to the internet unless you had set this um, uh, edge traversal option in the Windows firewall. Applications can set this option themselves through an API if they want to when they call the Windows fire when they create an exception in the Windows firewall. The Windows firewall APIs have an option in them for setting the edge traversal flag. But if you do that, you should warn the users. You should always prompt the user saying um, that that getting getting their consent that they uh, uh, that it's okay to allow the your application to so be Vista used on the won't internet. do that uh, using uh, UAC. Well, UAC would be it will prompt whenever an ex an exception in the Windows firewall is created, you will get prompted. Um, for permission to create that exception, mm -hmm. so that will happen all the time. Okay. But we, I'm saying that we have, we recommend that developers actually also prompt for okay. permission to allow Teredo to be used. So this is a separate thing mm. because users might not realize that when they just clicked the consent to create the Windows Firewall exception, they were allowing this to be used over Teredo as well, which would mean that anybody outside on the internet can come in and access that service. Hmm. So uh, a, an example is the remote assistance software in Vista. They do autom the remote assistance Vista software does automatically set the edge traversal flag for their exception in the Windows firewall. And when you run remote assistance, it actually gives you a little window saying, um, uh, if you click to consent, can, if you if you click to consent to run remote assistance, you you are agreeing to allow this to be used directly on the internet. And so then once you do that, then remote assistance will use sure. Teredo if, if it can. And of course, it will only let in trusted parties, yeah. right? I mean, you have to create a remote assistance session for it to well, be remote useful. Well, remote assistance would have to be listening. So you exactly. have to have run remote assistance that it's listening on the box. Mm -hmm. And if you have to have a Windows firewall exception, as we were just discussing, mm -hmm. or, or the host firewall would be blocking things. So only, only applications or services that have exceptions mm -hmm. um, in the Windows firewall and that have this edge traversal flag set will be allowed to receive traffic coming in over Teredo. Excellent. Now, I mean, the other thing to think about is proxy servers are also useful for protecting, you know, if I'm writing, an, if I'm a corporation, I'm, I don't want people to run uh, IPv6 Teredo mm -hmm, ever. Mm -hmm. So is there any sort of policy that can be set on the NAT to never allow uh, this type of traffic to go through? I mean, I understand that could be challenging, but... So for Teredo to work, yeah. Teredo requires that the edge device allow all outbound UDP traffic without any any um, uh, restrictions. Okay. Most um, enterprise edge firewalls do not 
work that way. So uh, at Microsoft, on our Microsoft corporate network, um, it, it blocks Teredo. Not that they explicitly made a policy to allow it, but because they don't allow all traffic to just go out willy-nilly as it wants to, mm -hmm. that ends up blocking Teredo. Teredo is, is a consumer um, uh, technology. We don't, we don't intend it for corporations or, or enterprise.